In Movies and Money, film critic Eric Childress is here. Eric, you are just finishing up a busy week of covering the Sundance Film Festival. Are there more independent or smaller producer films being discovered that we need to know about? Last week, you talked about films getting backing from Apple and from Netflix. There definitely are, Angie. Nothing is measured up to the 20 million deal struck last week by Netflix for Fair Play and Apple for Flora and Son from the director of Ones. But also look for A24's release of You Hurt My Feelings. Now this is a new film from Nicole Holofcener, reteaming with Julie Louis-Dreyfus, who last paired on the film Enough Said with the late James Gandolfini. And this is one of her strongest comedies about the little lies of encouragement we tell our significant others and our children, and the unintentional harm that they can inflict on those relationships. Now I was also a big fan of Theater Camp, which Searchlight Pictures napped at the fest. It's a mockumentary in the style of the Christopher Guest movies like Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show about a kid's camp for aspiring Broadway artists starring Ben Platt and Molly Gordon, who also co-directed the film. There's not a minute that went by in this film where I wasn't laughing heartily. Now, Searchlight also showed a wonderful new romantic comedy called Rye Lane that is going to be premiering on Hulu on March 31st that I am highly recommending. And Sony Classics picked up A Little Prayer with Davis Strathern and Jane Levy. It's a beautifully acted Southern drama from the writer of Junebug, the film that really ignited Amy Adams' resume. And I think the same could be done for Levy with this one. And watch out for Strathern's name come next year's award season. Avatar, The Way of Water just finished its seventh straight week at number one. But do you think that 80 for Brady could actually beat it this weekend, especially with that retirement talk coming from superstar Tom Brady? Oh, I think it will, Angie. Though it won't be the only film to beat Avatar, whose overall numbers right now can't be beat by many. Now, James Cameron's sequel has just moved into the top 10 highest grossing domestic films ever with over $620 million. Plus, it is now the fourth highest grossing film worldwide of all time, meaning that Cameron now owns three of the top four on their list all time, along with the original Avatar and Titanic. But it has been a top, as you said, for seven straight weeks, and all runs eventually come to an end. Let's toss in a clip of 80 for Brady. Aren't you tired of the same old boring lives? Let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is no place for four old women. This could be Tom's last one. He's almost 40. That's like 80 in people years. Yeah, we're 80 in people years. I plan to see this one. What can you tell us about this film? Now, 80 for Brady stars four legends aside from the seven-time Super Bowl champion as Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Sally Field, and Rita Moreno all go on a comic road trip to see their favorite, now retired player in another championship. Now, wackiness ensues, as they say, and given we are seeing signs of adults returning to support films in theaters, Tom Hanks' A Man Called Otto is headed to over $60 million at the end of its run, I suspect 80 for Brady could put up some surprising numbers if audiences are happy with it. There's another film poised to knock Avatar off its perch, and it's one that you've seen. What is your review of the latest from M. Night Shyamalan? His latest film, Knock at the Cabin, is not an original M. Night script. It's an adaptation of Paul Tremblay's novel, The Cabin at the End of the World, and is what happens when a family has their cabin invaded by four strangers who tell them that if they do not sacrifice one of themselves, the apocalypse is going to happen. I have not minced words about my feelings of M. Night's work in the past and keep wondering if his next film will be the first that I like. That did not happen this time, as the filmmaker squanders somebody else's great premise for a change and constantly pulls his punches on what should be an emotionally brutal horror film. Wasting an interesting Dave Bautista performance, Shyamalan fails to build tension, diverting safely from the book's text until a stunted conclusion that is par for the course of his work. My advice to everyone this weekend is to stay home and watch Bill Paxton's Frailty from 2001 that has everything that this film fails at. Ouch, thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.